Coming up in the show, I'm going to discuss 13 crime, mystery, thriller and suspense novels featuring characters who are journalists. So stay tuned. You're listening to the Book Nerd Podcast, a virtual book club for readers of mystery, thriller and suspense novels. Twice a month, I will bring you a short discussion about what makes a great thriller novel, as well as latest reads over a cup of tea. And who am I? I'm your host, cosy mystery writer and thriller author, Amelia D. Hay. Hello, book lovers. As you can guess by the spoilery title, I'm going to discuss 13 crime, mystery, thriller and suspense novels featuring characters who are journalists. I've decided to divide this episode up into two parts. The first will be books I want to read and the second will be books I've read. My love of characters who are journalists stems from two places. Essentially, they're really the same place. The first is my love of the Superman story. And the second, which is directly related to the first, is my love of the hit 90s TV show Lois and Clark. I'm not going to lie, 14-year-old Amelia had a huge crush on Dean Cain. But not Dean Cain as Superman, but Dean Cain as Clark Kent. What can I say? I love me a nerd. But I also loved Lois. I could relate to her. She's stubborn, ambitious, and was obsessed with her work. 14-year-old Amelia wanted to be Lois Lane when she grew up. Honestly, there's a part of me that still does. This episode originally had 16 books, but as I was curating the list, I realized that two of the books contained plots centered around the deaths of toddlers or young children. My family has been through a tragedy of losing an older baby to SIDS when I was about five years old. Maybe I was four turning five. I can't really remember it's well I remember but I don't remember how old I was as I've grown up I got married and considered having my own children and I've discovered that this event has had a profound effect on me as you'd imagine it would so I removed these books from my to be read list because I will probably find them quite triggering in general I tend to stop reading books that feature the investigations of crimes against children and minors under the age of 18 I did start reading a book that opened with the aftermath of a death of a young girl and I got the hint that the crime had a sexual element. I immediately closed the book and have no intention of picking it up. Like it's still sitting on my Kindle app but I can't remember the title off the top of my head. I don't want to mention it. You get my point. And there are certain curse words or racial slang that I can't handle so I deleted another book for that reason as well as other reasons relating to crimes against children or investigating crimes against children. I'm not saying that those books books were bad, they were just not for me. Also, it's worth pointing out that those books had a significant number of good reviews. So without further ado, let's get into my list of books I want to read. Because I'm yet to read these books, I will be taking the plot description from the book's official blurb found online. And in most cases, I think I've paraphrased it or maybe I've just taken a few snippets because it sounded better than something that I've created. I'm just sharing this in order to give credit to where it's due. The first book is See Her Run by Peggy Townsend. Aloha Snow is a former journalist who was let go of her job with the LA Times and now she gets one more shot to prove that she has what it takes with a story some would die for. The element that made me add this book to the list has got to be the fact that she's been possibly fired from her job, I'm assuming for misconduct or really screwing up a story or something to that effect and she has one last chance to redeem herself. And there are other elements within the book blurb that I feel might actually be a bit spoilery. So I've deliberately left them out because I want to try and keep this podcast as spoiler free as possible. So the genres for this book, are it's a mystery and within the broader mystery genre, it's actually a women's sleuth type of book. At present, this book seems to be a two book series. So fingers crossed this actually continues into something bigger. But when you go and look online for this book, you'll notice that it just says book one of two. And it's interesting that they're not taking a risk and planning for more books in the series. Because when you look at the book description, there's a whole heap of excessive accolades about how great she is. And there's a part of me that thinks, well, if she's that great, why aren't you planning for more books? But I guess that's my inner skeptic. But I just, I really 
really do hope that there are more books in this series because it sounds like it's going to be something that's really, really interesting. In light of that, the second book in the series is called The Thin Edge and that was published in May 2019. The first book was published in June 2018 so maybe she is releasing a book every year. So maybe May or June this year there might be a book release but I'm not seeing a pre-order at the moment. So that sort of makes me think this might actually be a two book series. I don't know, I've just never seen a duology in the crime mystery and thriller space. I just didn't think, because most people who read crime mystery and thrillers want a series because you want a character that you like and you want to be taken on a journey with them and they're not doing that with this book which is obviously I'm upset and I'm not over this and I'm probably not going to get over it anytime soon. I'm probably going to be saying this a lot, so brace yourself for it. The second book in the series is The Dying Hour by Rick Moffina. And the other thing I'll probably be doing in this podcast is butchering names, so I'm really sorry. This book has actually been on my to-be-read list for an exceptionally long time. When I first started writing my James Lund thrillers, I was inspired by the Lois and Clark TV series, hit TV series that I mentioned at the start of this podcast. And I went on to create the byline series which isn't published yet so at the moment I'm only I'm writing the James Lond prequel series and then the byline series will be in that same universe he travels to New York and while I was writing that book I was starting to think that my book was a special snowflake that no other books in the thriller genre actually featured crime reporters investigative journalists and people like that and so I was I spent a very long time searching on Amazon for books that were like mine and I was starting to get freaked out and then I saw this book and I was like oh my god this is going on my kindle I'm not alone and I remember when I downloaded it I decided when I published my first book I should create curate a list of characters who are journalists who appear who appear in crime mystery and thriller novels and share it with other people who are like me because I write what I like to read well I'm writing a book that I want to read if that makes sense I like because I like that tv show I love the concept of two reporters investigating crimes like I really loved the first and the second series I didn't actually like series three and four of Lois and Clark for me that really sucked and it got really weird but I loved the first First two series. I'm gonna try and avoid going down the supernatural route because for me it just gets a bit too strange and not believable. But I down, saw this book, downloaded it, and I have every intention of reading it, even though it's been on my list for a long time. And actually, creating this episode has reminded me I've got all these other books to read that I want to read. So it's made my what am I going to read next question very difficult to answer. But back to The Dying Hour. So this book is book one in the Jason Wade mystery series. There is another series with a similar name by a different author. And I sort of think that's that's a huge faux pas if you're going to create a series with exactly the same character name as someone else has used. I sort of think couldn't change it. You obviously didn't do any research. But oh well, it's not for, I guess it's not for me to judge, even though I am. The next two books, I guess this is more of a trilogy than a series, is Every Fear and a Perfect Grave. And as you can probably tell by the titles, these books are sitting within the mystery and thriller genres. I think a lot of books in the mystery, thriller, suspense, and maybe not so much, yeah, crime to a certain extent, you can sort of put them in any of these categories because they're very interchangeable and they all have very similar tropes. In light of this, I think it's a series that isn't going to be expanded upon the first three books because the third book was published in 2007 so this might be all the books that the author plans to write which is really sad but the books are quite long I think I'll just check how long the audiobook is for this one because I've got the Kindle and the audiobook and from memory it's quite long yeah it's it's a 10 hour audiobook so I purchased this with the Kindle Whisper Sing for Voice feature so I purchased the ebook and when I went to purchase it it said I could buy the audiobook for I'll just double check my Amazon account yeah I purchased the audiobook for £3.99. So that's a 10 hour ebook for less than £4. It's like coffee, like a really good coffee. So I thought, yay. Sorry, for some reason I didn't write I didn't write down the book description for that one. I'll just pause and figure it out for you. 
So here's the book blurb. Jason Wade joined the Seattle Stars internship program as a rookie reporter. Haunted by his past, Wade pursues the story of Karen Harding, a college student whose car was found abandoned on a lonely stretch of highway in the Pacific Northwest. How could this beloved young woman with an altruistic nature simply vanish? Book three is The Poet by Michael Connolly. This is another book that's been on my list for an exceptionally long time. And in the next episode, you'll see that it's a part of a book haul. So here's a bit about the book. The apparent suicide of his policeman brother sets Denver crime reporter Jack McVoy on edge. Surprised at the circumstances of his brother's death prompts Jack to look into a whole series of police suicides and puts him on the trail of a cop killer whose victims are selected all too carefully. Not only that, but they all leave suicide notes drawn from poems of the writer Edgar Allan Poe in their wake. Based on the book description, you can probably tell that that story sits within the crime genre. The good news is when I purchased this, this was just a book on its own, but The Poet is now a part of a trilogy. The second book is The Scarecrow and book three is Fair Warning. I'm not 100% sure if book three is actually part of the trilogy, but it features Jack and And the reason why I'm questioning it is it's not linked on the online stores. The book is most likely a part of the Jack McVoy series or trilogy. I have no idea whether the third book is the last because I have a funny feeling that book's on pre-order and there's there's been quite some time between the second book and the third book. Unfortunately, I didn't write down the publishing dates for you of those two books, but there's been many years between book two and three. Based on a few reviews, this book may have a bit of gore, but that's to be expected of the crime genre. I noticed a few people mentioned that it wasn't for them because it was quite gory and I'm wondering if they found the book because maybe at one stage it was put in a different category that it perhaps shouldn't have been. Book four is False Truth by Diane Capri and Beth Dexter. And this is the first book in the Jordan Fox mystery series. And here's a quick description of the plot, just in case you're curious. TV reporter Jordan Fox has one last chance to get justice for her mother before the killers return to finish what they started. And Jordan is their number one target as she searches for her mother's killer with help from the sexy young cop and even sexier new craft brewer in town who both want to protect her. As you can probably tell by the description of the plot, this there is a romantic subplot, but I don't think it's a, this subplot is enough to describe it as a romantic thriller or romantic suspense. So that's why I sort of think, well, I believe, to the best of my knowledge, that this book sits in the mystery or thriller genre, just as a straight mystery or thriller, because I've noticed, I've searched for the books online, and I can't see it shoved into the romance category. However, I will point out, because this is on the books I want to read list, I have no idea about how much of the romantic subplot plays into the story. The other thing that I think is worth mentioning, mainly because in the reviews a lot of people commented on this, but this book is a part of an 11-part serial, so each book is more like an episode of a larger story, much like if you were watching Downton Abbey, where each episode is a part of a bigger story from what I gather. I guess this story is more of a serial where you need to read the next book or you might possibly need to read the entire series to get the complete story arc. That's what I've gotten from the reviews. And also some people were quite upset by that but when you purchase the book now it's really clear and and each book has the same title but it'll say False Truth 1, False Truth 2. You get it. Like it's pretty, to me, it's pretty explicit. So maybe over time the author changed it or maybe people didn't pay attention to the book description and the title of the book. They just saw the cover and thought, oh, that that looks like a great read and clicks buy and clicks the buy button because that's how I buy books sometimes. Sometimes I'm really pulled in by the cover and the title and I go, oh, that looks really interesting. And then it falls into my shopping cart. That's what I tell my husband anyway. The fifth book in this list is The Secret Patient by Forgan W. Smith. The story starts off with a character called Nathan going to hospital for a blood test, but he never returns home. 
prize-winning journalist Elizabeth is in a slump. After taking down the mayor in a career-defining story, nothing else measures up. Desperate for anything, she follows a vague lead from a spooked informant to the local hospital. Once again, I've tried to keep the description of the plot as spoiler-free as possible. I'm interested in reading this because I worked in a hematology lab where they analyse blood and bone marrow and performed these tests, so I'm sort of interested to see how the blood test element of it involves in what a conspiracy is clearly going down at that hospital. Based on the description of the plot, you can probably tell that this book is a medical thriller and sits within the mystery genre as well. And the subgenre is women's sleuths. So if you particularly like books with women's sleuths, you may like this book. Too. The caveat I will add to this is based on the reviews, readers either loved this story or they didn't like it. But personally, I'm genuinely interested in reading this purely because of the hematology hospital factor. However, I will say that some, I guess the biggest complaint is some people didn't find it realistic. But because I haven't read this book, it's hard for me to know why. Maybe they found the concept of someone going missing from a hospital a little unrealistic. But again, the descriptions were really vague, but I saw this sort of kept popping up. But I think this is a big deal for the thriller genre where readers do want something that has a realistic feel. But then again, there is, it's sort of split 50-50. There are also people who, like over 50% of the reviewers gave this book four four or five stars. And then I think it was like 48% gave it three stars and under. I don't consider three stars a bad review, but I do believe it's worth pointing out. But seriously, I still want to read this book, even though there's a whole bunch of people. There are a few individuals that were quite vocal about whether they believe the book was realistic, but I don't particularly care. I still want to read it. And I did read the first page of the book. I went and had and looked in the look inside on the store and I didn't see anything I particularly didn't like. So I purchased the book. So like it's literally sitting in my Kindle. These next eight books are books that I have personally read. Book six is Absolute Proof by Peter James. I absolutely loved this story. It was, I read it in a few days and there's a part of me that really wishes that this book was a part of the series, but unfortunately it's a standalone. And I've honestly stopped myself several times from getting on Instagram and asking Peter James if he's going to write more books in this series because I thought that's super obnoxious and I should let the man write what he wants. Absolute Proof is a fast-paced story with an interesting plot with a dash of religious conspiracy. If you like Dan Brown's Robert Langdon series, then you'll love this book. Journalist Ross Hunter receives an unexpected call from history of art professor Dr. Harry F. Cook, who claims that he has been given absolute proof of God's existence. And how he hooks Ross Hunter into investigating his claims is he claims to have a message from his deceased brother. One week later, Ross finds Dr. Harry Cook dead in his house after he seeks him out and I think at this point he's still quite skeptical of whether there's any truth to this and at this stage he's had a few warnings about looking into it really weird warnings and I know I mentioned this and you can tell I'm clearly not over it but this book is a standalone but it's got such a beautiful cover it's absolutely gorgeous I'm actually considering doing a giveaway with this book and a few other books but I'll keep you posted on that absolute proof sits within the conspiracy thriller and and religious thriller genres. I went online and I looked at the books, the categories of books were in, and they didn't make any sense for me. But because the book's super popular, it's still selling. But honestly, based on what I've read, I do believe it's a thriller. It's not just religious fiction. Book seven is The Anonymous Source by A.C. Fuller. One year after the 9-11 attacks, court reporter Alex Vane discovers the story of a lifetime. After his editor buries the story, his source turns up dead. 
the events pull Alex into a violent world of media conspiracy. It almost feels redundant saying this, but this book sits within the conspiracy thriller genres. And I love this from start to finish. I thought the book was just excellent. And so I read the first book using the Whisper Sync for Voice feature, but this author only has one book in audio. And me being my inner audio nerd, I did email and ask if he was going to do the rest of the series, the rest of this five book series in audio, and he hasn't got back to me yet. As I pointed out, this book is a five book series, and I have the feeling that the book is, the series is complete because it last book says book five of five and he's gone on to write a different series within at the same genre so I was like oh it's really sad I do have all five books in this series on my Kindle app and there is a part of me that's waiting for the audiobooks but I suspect it's probably not going to work out like that and I'm probably going to dive in and read the rest of the series on my Kindle app but I just love reading with audio. I like being read to and it's easier for me to read and well to be able to read and do something and be listening to a story. It's how I meet my reading goals every year. Book number eight is Don't Tell Meg by Paul Teague. I know I've mentioned this book a few times throughout this podcast, but I'm still yet to finish this book. So I'm 10% of the, of my way through this book and I set it down due to shiny object syndrome. There were other things and I was also, because it's written in the first person, you get the sense that he's really going to screw up and you're about to witness the events unfold. And due to the nature of writing a book in that way, it adds an extra level of suspense and it's a cycle psychological thriller so this is the first psychological thriller that I've started reading and I found it quite suspenseful I was getting really upset and I thought I'll put the book down I'll calm down and then I'll come back and I've also got shiny object syndrome in between so I have every intention of coming back to this book but I just I haven't and I need to because I really want to read it just in case you're curious here's a little bit about the story Radio journalist Pete Bailey's relationship with his wife is on the rocks. They've been trying for a baby with no avail. And you get the impression they've been trying for a long time. On a working weekend, he falls for this charming TV reporter and has an affair that creates a trail of chaos which results in five people losing their lives. Don't Tell Meg is a first book in a trilogy bearing the same name. I think I'm just going to go check. I don't want to throw in book titles that aren't actually a part of this series. Book two is The Murder Place and book three is The Forgotten Children. So I know that I mentioned this before that but this book sits within the psychological thriller genres. Book nine is Fatal Enemy by Diane Capri. Fatal Enemy is a short story that was full of suspense, intrigue and was over too soon. Because it's so short, I will avoid talking about the plot because there's no way for me to discuss the plot without literally spoiling the entire book for you. So Fatal Enemy is the first book in a 10 book series and the series has been completely written. So if you like to sit down and binge a series, then you'll probably like this because you've got all the books you need to read and there's no way of the author dying and you not getting the ending that you're after. It's worth pointing out that the rest of the books in this series are full length and I think this first book is designed as a teaser for the rest of the series. So you're supposed to read it, enjoy it, get a bit of background, meet the character for the first time, just so when you read the series that you know what you're in for. So the genres this book series it's in uh, and possibly the series as well because these themes continue on with the rest of the books in the series. So the genres are private investigator mystery and legal thrillers. There is some type of legal aspect to these stories as well. Book 10 is Deadshot by R.J. Patterson. Deadshot is the first book in the Cal Murphy series. The series features a journalist who works for a small town newspaper who accidentally stumbles across the town's first serial killer and uncovers a dark secret. But naturally, everything is not as it seems. So Deadshot is the first book in a 12 book series and I do believe the series is complete. So again, this is another series you could binge because we all like binging things, don't we? So this book sits within the mystery and crime and 
and genres. So if you do like those particular genres, you probably will enjoy this. I actually finished reading this quite recently and the ending sort of took me by surprise. I didn't quite expect it. Well, when I got to the start of the third act, I had no idea who was committing all of these crimes. I actually thought it was a different character. The reason why I say this series is most likely complete is the last book was published on the 30th of September 2018. Book 11 is Last Girl Gone by J.G. Heatherton. Here's a bit about the story. Laura Chambers returns home after being fired from the Boston Globe and she returns to her hometown with her tail between her legs. Her new job is boring until the murder of a young girl is discovered or her body is discovered and this leads her to realise that there's actually a serial killer in her town but no one is interested in knowing about this or her solving the crimes which is really fascinating. I reached the halfway point in the book and I still had no idea as to the identity of the serial killer. It wasn't until the final hour that the killer was revealed and it was really well written. Based on the book description I just shared with you, you can probably tell that this is a crime thriller or it sits within the mystery genre with the subgenre of women's sleuths. Interestingly enough, I think this book might be a part of a series because I'm getting the impression that it might be an open-ended series depending on the success of the first book. And... At the moment, there doesn't seem to be no set number of books because books one and two aren't linked in any way. So book two is on pre-order and will be released on July 7th. And I use this term lightly, but it's on sale for £9.41 pence or £12.28 pence plus taxes. So that's the price for the ebook, not the paperback. That's right, the ebook. I was absolutely floored by that. It's so expensive. Like, if I did a pre-order, I probably... I don't know. I don't understand how some traditional publishing houses charge so much for an ebook. It's And it's a digital file. But I think it's because they want you to buy the hardback or the paperback. Maybe that's where they make their most money. Possibly. I have no idea why they do it, but it's so expensive. Anyway, rant over. Book 12 is Sanctus by Simon Toyne. And this is another series that I loved from start to finish. And this is obviously book one in that trilogy. The first book is obviously Sanctus. The second is The Key. And the third is The Tower. And these books are more like serials. Each book is a contained story, but you need, for instance, you couldn't start with the key because you've missed, you need to read the books in order. And just like another book I mentioned in this very long list of books, it's similar to the Robert Langdon books by Dan Brown. So if you like those books, you will probably like this too. And an interesting fact about this book is this particular, the Citadel and the city is set in Turkey, but it's fiction. It's not real. And I couldn't believe it because it's the way it's described. It's you feel like you're there and you feel like it's this real place. And I was like, oh, I should put this on you know, my list of places I want to travel. And when I searched, it was like, oh, this isn't a real place. And a lot of other people mentioned that in the reviews as well. So I'm not alone in that thought. So here's a bit about the plot, just in case you're interested. Liv Adamson, New York crime reporter, discovers her missing brother had joined a monastery in Turkey and died after flinging himself off the cliff of the citadel in a seemingly symbolic gesture. And how she finds out about this is the news. She sees it on the news. The news ignites a search for the truth and a journey to discover her true identity. In all honesty, this book and the entire trilogy was a complete page turner. And there's so many mysteries in this trilogy. It keeps me guessing and I just couldn't figure it out. I just couldn't figure any of the mysteries out. And it keeps me guessing right to the end and the ending of the the trilogy had me quite flawed because I didn't expect it to go in that direction. There's a part of me that wants to reread this now that I'm talking about it. It's one of those books that I sort of read and think, I want to write books like this where it's where the mystery keeps the reader guessing. It's a page turner. So there's a part of me that wants to reread it. And you can probably tell, but this book sits within the conspiracy thriller genre. (laughs) 
book 13 is Missing by A.D. Hay, and that's me. I, in all honesty, I forced myself to add in this book. When I started recording this episode, I had sort of included my book at the end with the intention of maybe I'll just skip it, (laughs) which is ridiculous. And I was avoiding it so much. I didn't actually put in the description. So before I started recording this segment, this tiny section of the podcast, I had to go in and copy a portion of my book description in there and write a few things about my own book. It just seemed stupid of me not to include my own book in a list of books featuring characters who are journalists. And you can tell I'm avoid talking about my own book. It's ridiculous. Like I'm definitely stalling. But just in case you're curious about my book, here's a bit about the plot. James Lolland is the chief editor of a small newspaper. It's hardly captivating work. He's bored. But all of this is about to change. Late one evening, he returns home to discover his longtime girlfriend and journalist Valentine has left. Early the next morning, James fails to reallocate her assigned story. To avoid blank space in the culture section and losing his job, he decides to write the story on the local museum's latest acquisition, Excalibur. But there's one thing he didn't count on. Excalibur is missing and a dead body is at the crime scene. As his investigations commence, James unravels a tangled web of betrayal, kidnapping and murder. But his fact-finding hasn't gone unrecognised. The wrong people have started to notice and there will be consequences dire consequences you'll love this gripping cloak and dagger mystery because of the twists turns and the ending you'll never guess if you want to read this book for free and leave an honest review on your favorite store then you can sign up at author adhay.com forward slash missing hyphen arc to receive a review copy and just in case you're wondering arc It just means advanced reader copy, but because it's published, I'm just calling it a reader copy. The reason why I'm doing this is I published my book at the end of January and I need reviews on the book. Just so it has social proof, just so those people who are thinking about buying it know, well, these other people liked it, didn't like it thought it was okay maybe I might too that's how the reviews work it's not really for me it's for other readers who are considering buying the book and need to know that other people may or may not have enjoyed it and just to let you know the link authoradhay.com forward slash missing hyphen arc will actually be only available for a limited amount of time so at some point I'm probably going to have to edit out this small section of me talking about the link but it will only be available probably for about three months and then I'm just going to cut just going to pull down the page or just leave a sorry you missed receiving this copy type of statement on the page but anyway if you made it this far and you're still listening to me thank you for listening to me talking about my own book I guess my question for you is, do you love reading books featuring journalists investigating crimes? And if so, do you know of any thriller novels featuring journalists as a main character that you could recommend? Or even books within the crime, mystery, thriller and suspense genres that featured characters who are amateur sleuths? I want to hear from you. Come on over to the blog post at ameliadhay.com forward slash tbn double zero four and i've just realized my last name is actually spelt h-a-y not h-e-y and on that blog post you'll also find affiliate links to the books they are affiliate links that will take you to the amazon.co.uk website where i'll receive i think it's a cent per book purchased it's not at all sexy but they are affiliate links so you'll see images of the books with links to the amazon store Or if you do prefer interacting within a Facebook group, I'll leave a link to the Book Nerd Reader Club Facebook group in the show notes in your favorite podcasting app. And once again, thank you for listening and happy reading, everybody. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Book Nerd Podcast. If you're new to this podcast or want to be notified about more episodes just like this, then click the subscribe button right now. You can find episode show notes and lots more information at ameliadhay.com forward slash book hyphen nerd. I'm your host, Amelia D. Hay, and I'll see you in two weeks time for another episode. Happy reading, everybody.